Hello, my name is Jupiter, I'm the community manager at Toya, and we're doing another Girls Who Games today. Uh, it's a bit different, we have Wild Goat. Hi. Hello. And we've got Wild Goat's children's Craftiest Goat, Minion Goat, and Littlest Goat. Hi! <laughs> and you're all YouTubers. Cool. Yes. So, I'm just going to get right into questions. Uh, what games do you all like to play? Uh, Minecraft mm -hmm. is like our top favorite. By far top favorite. <laughs> um, Roblox. We play Human Fall Flat. Animal Crossing. We have Animal Crossing. We do play Fortnite, but only for videos. <laughs> Fair, fair. <laughs> Smooth Kate is our new favorite. Smooth Kate? Um, yes, a brand new game. It's an indie game that's just being developed. We were able to do a demo on it. So much fun. Untitled Goose. That's Untitled yeah. Goose is a favorite. That is an absolute favorite of ours. Wow, what a variety of games. Yes, we do play a pretty wide variety of games. I'm not just stuck to one, but I do have to say Minecraft is still by mm. far top favorite. That's very cool. Uh, when did you all start playing video games? <laughs> all of us or me? <laughs> I guess we'd start with you. <laughs> um, I don't want to do an age reveal, <laughs> but um, I won't say what was my first game or anything like that, but I do remember um, when we got our computer, I was probably around eight years old. Mm -hmm. And the kids here, um, mine, have just been exposed to computers basically their entire life because I have just always loved technology and games and playing around with things on the computer and yeah. That's so great. I didn't have video games when I was very young, but when I was a teenager, I got into into like the whole gaming scene and it's now something that, I know it's like some people are like, oh, kids shouldn't be around screens very much, but it's great to see so many like even educational games that you can get kids involved in and just fun games and ways to interact as a family through that. Yes, that's one of my favorite things about video games is being able to play with my kids, with mm -hmm. my children, because it's obviously that they're going to be growing up in a very technology driven world. There's no way to get away from that. It is everywhere. So I'm just glad I'm able to embrace it and hang out with them and get to know all the things and all the fun that they're having with it as well, as well as learning new things about it that I might not have tried mm -hmm. or learned because, um, yeah, I might not poke at a game the same way they do. Yeah, <laughs> you never do. Little minds are so creative. Definitely. I've got two little ones here that when they start building in the Minecraft world, you just never know what's going to end up coming. And I'm like, what? what made you think of this? This is an excellent way to make a toaster in Minecraft or, you know? <laughs> a toaster. <laughs> and any number of things that they come up with. It is so much fun. I love it. Mm. It's definitely a big plus having so many different ideas around and having so many different creative ways to attack different projects. Uh, when I first played Minecraft with my brother, he had been playing for months before I joined. And he was showing me, it was very early Minecraft days. So he was showing me like attaching trap doors to stuff so that they were just like platforms almost. Yes. And I was like, how do you do this? Doesn't make it, it's a trap door. It's a door, it goes on the ground. And he was like, nah, <laughs> make it a course. And I was like, what is, what is this? The physics of games is mm. always mind boggling. It's like, where did they get the idea that water should flow that way? Cause that's not how that's gonna ever work in real life. No, fixing, <laughs> correcting water in Minecraft is a mess. <laughs> they all, all the blocks are individually moving differently. <laughs> yes, I have one minion goat here. She can fix water flow issues. Let me tell you, she has repaired more ponds and rivers and oceans than anybody else I know. I definitely needed to come into our world and help out. <laughs> this is a skill that we need. <laughs> there you go. She'd be happy to drop by. She'd help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> What do you guys like about Roblox as a platform? One of the things that I like is the variety of games that you can have available. Mm -hmm. um, that you can create your own, too. I would love to get into creating games. Uh, just haven't had enough time with everything else that we're already doing okay. to dive into that. Um, variety and creating, I think, is the two biggest things. Let me ask these guys, though. What's your, um, what do you like about the Roblox platform? It's probably that you can create your own characters the way you Oh, you can create your own character mm. to the way you like it. Yes? That's a very good point. I think I just really like the way the, the games are made and you can just play them. There's a bunch of quests. 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 <laughs> Keeping you busy. Quests. Uh, the varieties of games, like you said, and just 
all the different things you can do in them and the different ways they all look. I like seeing all the variety. Mm, lots of different answers. I like the whole concept of quests being the favorite thing as well. <laughs> yes, they they definitely love the quests and tasks on purpose to do in the game. Mm -hmm. I think that those are some of our favorites to do is, you know, we're not big on role playing as much as we are on let's go do a quest. Let's go finish some stuff. Yeah, that <laughs> having an exact task and end bit to and reward most of the time as well. Yes, um, I games. try to avoid the super, super clicky, clicky ones, but mm. occasionally we do have those that sneak in. One of them is Bee Swarm. We do like that one a lot. <laughs> I just played Bee Swarm at our live stream over the weekend, and there was just so many, like, so many huge people with tons of bees just making, like, hurricanes happen or, like, tornadoes. Yep, yep, that would be <laughs> me. Really I do cool. have a windy bee. I can make tornadoes. We've been playing that for a couple of years now, haven't we? I think, yeah, we just got the two younger ones started on it, but um, we've been helping them out and getting them caught up for bees miss. <laughs> Wonderful. So I know you play together quite often, but have you ever had like negative experiences in Roblox or issues with toxic communities? And how have you dealt with those? Do you want to start this one, Minnie? <laughs> no, she's like, I don't even want to go there. Yes. We have had negative experiences on Roblox. We have come across toxic communities and games as well. Mm -hmm. um, the ways that we have dealt with them is in a variety of ways. It just depends on what is available. Uh, for now, we have chat off basically the entire time we're in a public game mm. for most of us. There are some of us who have it on, but that's because the maturity level is it's different. Yeah. Um, but in order to prevent some of those things to get through, um, chat is off unless they're in a private server. So it's friends only and you can pretty much trust that, you know, things are going to be friends, okay in yeah. there. <laughs> um, when it comes to toxic games or communities, I have, when streaming, I've had lots of issues with um, exploiters coming in mm -hmm. just to get attention in the streams. They also drop into the chat then as well. Um, so then there's a lot of banning and reporting. Um, I will usually shift to a smaller game, like not as many people can get into the server or a private server. I don't prefer to do private servers because there's not a lot of protection on them. I really wish that there was a better way to kick people from your servers if you have a private server. So you don't have to worry about the exploiters coming in and totally just like annihilating all the fun that you could be having with your friends, family, or stream. <laughs> hmm. It's definitely a big issue when you have such popular, like a popular platform in the way that Roblox is, having communities and having just individuals who are so keen on ruining the experience. And it's always yes. something that we're always looking to give advice on how to deal with it, especially as like we're obviously a female first community. We're a community of primarily women who make games and we're looking to make our community very safe and very welcoming. And especially like you stream as well, which has its own issues as well people coming into chat and being not even rude in roblox but can be just rude on your stream and i know a lot of streamers that i've known over time they've had a lot of trouble just dealing with that yes having a great moderating team has mm. so helped me very much very much so i wouldn't be anywhere without the moderating team that i have in place so people that you can trust that are going to have your back and they're going to be able to stand up for the values that you have instated for your streaming platform and your channel, that has just, that has been such a blessing mm. <laughs> and made life so much better because there's no way I'd been able to do or get to where I am right now without that team. And that sort of answered my next question, but what makes you feel safe within a community? Um, yeah, the moderating team, having good friends around and uh, at least the ability to be able to turn off chat, to be able to report, mm -hmm. and you know, just to get them out of um, private servers if you choose to go that route. Try to stay on public servers as often as I can, but if a problem arises, just switch up games, go to a smaller game. And normally what I ask next is about where you find communities to hang out with, but you are obviously building your own little community through your streams and through the various activities that you do in Roblox. So how do you find building a community? How do you manage that? Um, we just kind of uh, got started 
what was that? Three years ago, the kids decided they wanted a YouTube channel. Four years ago. Mm -hmm. It's four years coming up wow. on now. I'm so sorry. They decided they wanted a YouTube channel. And I was like, oh, sure, we could roll this into homeschooling, videography, mm -hmm. and learning to edit, and all that fun stuff. I love technology. So any excuse to sit around and play a video game, I mean, come on. Who wouldn't? Um, <laughs> I wish I had such a cool mom growing up. <laughs> You want to do YouTube for school? Go for it! Like, yes! <laughs> it was, you know, I didn't think, I didn't think it would go much further than the learning aspect of it. So, mm. um, they've each had a little bit of taste of video editing and, uh, they've gotten to know the video process and what editing equals and things like that. That's why you, you hear them very quiet right now because they're like, oh, we're not going to overlap on audio. <laughs> Smart. Yep. <laughs> Because it makes it more difficult to edit, and they don't want to hear mommy back here going, ah, I can't edit this audio. <laughs> no, they're actually really good at it just because of the whole aspect of getting used to the process. So, um, yeah, they just wanted to do that, and uh, we just started getting to know people online mm -hmm. and um, fell into an amazing community um, with our Discord and everything else. We were able to uh, be invited into a group community, which is just amazing so i get to hang out with three other awesome content creators on a daily basis inside the discord it's a very unique experience and we just brought all of our communities in there together and uh, promote and i don't know it's just it's been it's been such an amazing journey it's been so much fun mm -hmm. and uh, probably a lot easier than it should have been <laughs> <laughs> because of so many awesome people who have stepped in and said hey we're here we got this <laughs> it's great to find communities like that, though, and link up. And this is the yeah. FNA Nation, right? This is FNA Nation, yes. FNA Nation. <laughs> Wonderful. And it was started It was started by Effect 2.0. He brought Mrs. Samantha in with him mm -hmm. first, um, invited me over, and then I invited Rad Dad from the Kittaloo crew on in there afterwards. And um, we got to know each other at a convention. We went to a convention together and hung out at that convention for the weekend. Really hit it off. Just had a blast, had a great time, and um, it's just been growing ever since. Fun. That's a really great story as well, like a, a starting story. I miss events. I remember them. I miss events too. It was so much fun to get to hang out with these friends that we got to make. Mm -hmm. um, they really honestly became more than just online friends. They have become in real life friends. So these are the people I like to hang out with. <laughs> That's so fun though. It's so fun to have friends that have the same hobbies. And I totally get having real life friends that you met online. They're no longer online friends, you know? Right. They just kind of become an extension of the family is basically what Fanon Nation is. It's mm. just an extension of our family. Um, the kids get to hang out with everybody there. It's been really fun getting to know a lot of the other community members on there and get to know them over the years because we're going on four years and a lot of these people have been with us basically from the start, mm. right from the get go. So it's really, really cool to be able to see that they're growing and we're growing and um, we're still friends and we still get to hang out together. So it's been really, really, really nice to have so many awesome people around. And uh, everybody's invited over to Fanon Nation if you're looking for a great community. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. it really is. I just, hands down, my favorite place to hang out. Um, so Roblox is an international community. Um, are you experienced with that? How do you feel about being on a game with people all over the world? Um, I think it's really cool. I have been able to uh, experience cultural differences in a very, very different way. And it's been really fun because there's people from Germany. We have some good friends in Australia now. Um, there's people from England. There's people from, oh, wow. They're just all over Singapore. I think so. I think so. <laughs> we don't try to ask for too much personal information of course. because of the fact that this is an online community and you really can't gauge anybody's age or gender or abilities or who they are or who they aren't. So we try to restrict as much personal mm. information coming to us as much as possible. Um, the people that we do know are people who we have known for pretty well the entire four years mm -hmm. or we have met in person just like the FNAF 4 the four of us we are all adults with families and um, we just know each other very well so we don't have to worry about that um, being able to uh, explain to the kids the cultural differences sometimes because communication can be very tricky at yes. times especially if English is our only language and English is their second third or fourth mm -hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we try to be very aware of that and um, being able to, uh, um, to respond to their different holidays and the different practices and traditions that they might have for those holidays. Those have just been really fun to learn. Mm. And it's such a good thing to know about all of these different cultures. It really widens your view on the world, especially as you have kids learning about these different parts of yes, the world. Yes, definitely, yes. Outside of video gaming, what are some of your hobbies? Um, I used to have a lot more than I do now. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's very <laughs> fair. Creating, <laughs> content creating does start taking over every aspect of your life if you let it a little much. Mm. Um, we used to have a lot more before everything else started happening too, to keep everybody kind of restricted into the household. That's um, we like to we like to read, we like to bike, uh, tons of crafting, sewing. Um, I can always go back to reading, huh, you know. <laughs> reading, <laughs> reading, reading, reading. Anything with animals, um, volunteering or working with animals of those, you know, those types of things. We love that. Family, hanging out with my parents. Gardening has been a big thing. Um, and lastly, I know you've mentioned quite a few YouTubers, but do you have any favorite YouTubers or any YouTubers um, outside of your group that you really enjoy watching as a family or on your own? Um, it's basically those three that are mm -hmm. our top favorite YouTubers. That would be um, Mrs. Samantha and Effect2O and Rad Dad from the Kittaloo crew. And then um, we do watch Ace Unhacked quite a bit. He's tons of fun. <laughs> um, Finia Poo, Funby. Funby is a big one. We watch him quite a bit. Cool. Those are all of my questions. <laughs> I hope that was good. Is there anything else you'd like to say or promote? We do have a Minecraft server. Ooh. <laughs> Our Minecraft server is called fanacraft.fun. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, partnered with MC Pro Hosting, who has been amazing in helping getting the server put together and keeping it going in operation for us. They have a discount code for us as well. We uh, invite Bedrock players onto this server. It is a Java-based server, but we do have Bedrock players invited and playing onto the server now as well, and that is an amazing feature. It's pretty much brand new. Definitely sounds like an interesting feature, though, to be uh, a part of. It is so cool. It is so much fun. There are days when we have more Bedrock players on our Java server than we have Java players. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, Wow, that is so cool. And we'll definitely put that in the description as well. <laughs> and thank you so much for talking to me. This was fun. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Hugs for all. <laughs>